Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch, and this is the ninth video in the Xcode SwiftUI workshop. And in this video, we'll be continuing to build our location finder application, and we'll create a function to query the API for location information based on the information we provide from an updated location finder view. I love getting your feedback, so tap the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video and leave a comment below. Make sure you subscribe to the video and ring that bell to get notifications of new videos. And if you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee. You can continue on from where you left off in the last video using the same project, or you can download the completed project from the link in the description. The next step is to make the query to the API and decode the resulting JSON. In Location Finder view, we'll need to enter a postal code or a zip code. So this means we'll need a text field that can be bound to some state property. So let's create that state property at the top of our Location Finder view, and we'll call it code and initialize it as an empty string. We'll want this text field only to be visible to our users if the selected country is not our static country.none. So before the spacer in the vStack, we'll present this if clause, if the selected country is not equal to none. Before we present an action to fetch the result, let's provide the user with the possible range that they might enter. Remember that this range property is part of the country object, so when we select a country, we'll have access to that range property. So we can create a text view using this property as the string. Below that, because we're still in a vStack, we'll create another text view that'll provide the users with text for what they need to enter. So we'll say text postal code slash zip range, and then set the font to a size of dot caption, and then we'll set a foreground color to dot secondary. And then below that, we can create our text field using code for the title, and we'll bind it to that code state property, making sure we use that dollar sign. And then to include a border, we'll set the text field style to rounded border, and we don't need it to be the entire width of the view, so we'll set a frame and specify a width of 100. Below that, we'll create a button where the action will make that API request. So we'll use a label of get location. We'll leave the action empty for now because we'll need to create that function in our location service class. But I'm going to apply a button style of bordered prominent. And we'll need to make sure that that button action is disabled whenever the code is empty. So we'll have to provide a disabled modifier where the code is empty. Well, we see now in the canvas, because our selection for the country is none, none of the views are present. However, as soon as I select a country, like Canada, the views appear, but the Get Location button is inactive. I do see the range expected of me, so I can enter one of those in the text field, and as soon as I do, the button becomes active. Well, after we make a request, we'll receive a result back from the API and we'll need to decode it and create an instance of our location type object. Well, the issue is that there may or may not be any places in the array property that match the code that we entered. Also, what if there is more than one place in that array? Well, if that's the case, we're just going to pick the first one and extract from it the place name, the state, and the latitude and longitude. So we can present the place and the state name in a couple of text views and use the coordinates to present a map. Well, we could in location services create four different published properties for each of those things that we need. But to make it easier to read and to deal with, within that location services class, I'm going to create a struct that contains those four properties. So we'll call that struct location info. And the four properties that will represent those are going to be place name, which is a string, state, which is a string. But longitude and latitude will come back as strings, 
but I want them to be doubles. So we're going to have to do something before we create an instance of this location info. Now we can create a published property that we'll call location info, but we're going to make it an optional instance of location info. This means that location info will be nil until we get a successful result. So whenever we deal with this property, we'll have to unwrap the optional. And the best way, as you'll see, is to use an if let. Now we need to create that function that will call the API to fetch the location based on the information that we submit. Well, in order to make that call, we'll need to know the base URL for our API. And that's https colon slash slash api.zippopotum.us. So we'll create a property constant at the top of this file that we'll call base URL that will be that URL. Well, the other two pieces of information that we'll need will be the country and the entered postal code. Both of these pieces of information will come from the entry in our location finder view. So the country will be the selected country's code from the picker, and the postal code will be the value entered in the text field and bound to that code state property. So the function will be making a call to an external service that may take some time to respond with an answer. So we'll have to wait for that answer to come back. So we're going to have to make it an asynchronous function. So we'll create a function with those two parameters called fetch location. So for country code, which is a string, postal code, which is a string. And then to make it asynchronous, we'll specify async before the first brace. This asynchronous function is going to be executed on a different thread. But when we update our location info property, it needs to be updated on the main queue because that's a requirement for iOS apps. So in order to force the execution to happen on the main queue, we can simply annotate this function with the at main actor wrapper. Well, at this point, your users may enter garbage strings. So rather than crashing the app, we should probably handle errors by presenting an error warning somewhere on the screen. And we're going to do this shortly in our UI by adding a conditional text field in red, only if there's been an error. So to deal with this, we can, in our Location Services class, create another optional published property that we can update whenever there's an error. So this means we'll start out as nil, but then when we get an error, we can set it to a string of our choosing. So again, like the location info property, we have to check that it's not an optional string using an iflet to unwrap it. So back in our location fetch function then, we can continue by building our request URL from the base country code and the requested postal code. So we just join it together with pluses, placing slashes in between each one to get us a joined string. Now, if our users, though, add some extra space after the code word and they're entering it, we're going to have a problem. So we want to remove any of those extra spaces before we make that call to the API. So we can do that by grouping the combined string within parentheses and then use a trimming characters modifier and specify we want to trim using the white space and new lines case. And I like to separate my modifiers onto a second line for readability. So this will trim the white space at the end. But what if the postal code has a space in the middle, as you're going to see from at least one of our country ranges? Spaces in a URL must be replaced with a percent %20. So we can add another modifier to convert what we already have, our trimmed string, into one that uses percented coding. So we can add a adding percent encoding modifier with allowed characters being the URL query allowed case. Now, as soon as we add that last modifier, our URL string now is an optional value. And we can see that when we option click on the variable, we see that it's optional. And we can't have that, so we'll need to do a guard check here to unwrap it. And we do say guard let else block and in the else 
statement, we can assign an appropriate error string if it wasn't able to be unwrapped. And if there is an error, we must return from the function and not proceed. Well, before we leave this guard check, we can do one more thing within the check and ask to see if the URL string is actually going to be able to create a valid URL. If it can't, we can use that same error string. So right before the else statement, we can do another check for this by adding another condition to the guard check using a comma, and then forming a URL from the URL string, which it could be optional, so that guard applies here too, and we'll unwrap it if it's successful. So this guard then is checking for two things, and both must be true in order to proceed, otherwise the error string will get set. Well, now that we have a valid URL, we can execute a shared URL session method to fetch the data from that URL. Now, this is an asynchronous function that may fail, so we'll need to enclose this request in a do catch block. When we receive the data back, it'll return a tuple containing a data and a response. If it fails, we can catch the error and assign an appropriate error message to our error string property. Well, I don't care about the response, only the data. So when we assign the results to this tuple, I can just use data and then an underscore, and that underscore will simply ignore and not assign the response to any variable that I have. When we call that URL session shared data method from the URL, we need to specify that we try and await the result before we can assign to our tuple the return values. As I mentioned, if it fails, we catch the error by setting that error string to an appropriate string. Well, now that we have this data, we can try to decode it using a JSON decoders decode function to a location self object. It's not an array, it's a simple location object and I'll assign that to a temporary location object. Well, if this fails to decode, it'll be caught and the error will be the same as what we already have in our catch block. Well, if we've made it this far, then we have a valid location and it has a places array that may or may not have places in it. If it does, then we only want the first one. So we'll use an if let to unwrap it since the first method on an array always produces an optional value. So this will only be successful and apply to place if we can find the first one. This now gives us enough information that we can now assign an instance to our published optional location info property. So remember though that the place.longitude and place.latitude values are both strings and our location info struct requires that they be doubles. So you may recall from our first app in this series, we can convert a string to a double but this will be an optional value. So in this case we use nil coalescing to provide that optional value of zero if it fails. Now there's one more function that I'll need to create in here, and I'm gonna call that function reset, so that each time we choose another country, we'll call this function and set our location info back to nil, and our error string to nil as well. Well, now that we have this location service class pretty much completed, we can return to the location finder view and make a call to our new functions when necessary. Well, whenever we change our selection of the country, we'll want to reset our error strings in location info properties. That's that reset function. So at the end of our view struct, after the navigation title, we can add a method that will watch for changes on the selected country property. This is an onChange method that will provide us with a selected country value that we could use in our code, but we won't need to. We simply want to use that in order to trigger a reset. So we'll just use an underscore instead of assigning a variable. 
And then in the body, where the trailing closure is now, we can call the location service reset function. And then we can reset our text field back to an empty string. To make the call to the API, we'll need to update the action in the getLocation function. So we'll call the function from the action by passing in the selected country code and the code for our postal code. However, since this is going to make a call to an asynchronous function in our location services class, we must embed it in an asynchronous unit of work called a task. And then within the task, we can await the result of making this call before we proceed any further. Well, we can use this information that we get back then to update our view to present the place name and the state. But first, if we did get an error somewhere along the line, we can present it. So after the disabled modifier, we can check to see if it's not nil. So we'll use an if let error string is equal to the location services error string. And this then unwraps it and assigns it to this local error string. And we can use that then to create our text view with the error string and set the foreground color to red. After this, we can see if we have a location info object. Remember, it's an optional, so we can perform another if let check to unwrap it if it does and assign it to a local variable that we can call location info. So if it does exist, then we can access the place name and state and present two text views in our vStack. And then one last thing before we test and before we add a map, when the screen loads, or if we fail to generate a location info object, we can display an image on the screen. So just before the spacer, create another conditional check to see if the location services location info is still nil. If it is, we'll display the image using the location finder asset. Well, this can be tested now in the preview or in the simulator. So let me select the country such as Canada, my country, and then I can enter the first three characters of my postal code as we see which is required by the range, and tap the Get Location button. The request is made, and you see I live in North Vancouver, Southwest Central, British Columbia. Let me try one more for the United States. Now, the only zip code I know is 90210, and some of you may be old enough to know what that reference is. And when I get that location, I see it's Beverly Hills, California. Now, Swift concurrency and fetching data from an API is something that you'll be doing all the time. And I've created a six-part series on this topic, and it's available on the Code with Chris YouTube channel. And I've also created an Xcode playground that you can use and test out not only APIs, but also decoding of data that is returned. So a full video on this topic is available on my channel. In the final video for this application, and indeed the entire series, we'll complete the application by adding MapKit so we can display our location on the map.